the, the main problem with using fear and pain-based approaches is that you're not addressing the root cause of the behavior you're looking to tra change. You're just looking to suppress it by, you know, choking the dog or shocking them or, you know, giving them so, some sort of aversive. Any PhD in behavior will agree you can change behavior with aversives, but what's left in its place. And the problem with using fear and pain-based approaches is that dogs generalize fear better than anything. So if they're afraid of your hand, then they're going to be afraid of all other hands coming towards them. And if your dog has an overly generalized sense of fear because they've been shocked or choked or they've been, you know, you, you know, been trained with aversive methods, they're going to have stress and they're more likely to bite. Because when dogs experience fear and pain, they start to shut down and they're not learning. They're trying to survive that event. If you remove fear and pain-based approaches and you use positive reinforcement, it doesn't mean you're permissive. It doesn't mean you let the dog do anything. But what it does do, it, it, it will help that dog trust you and trust other human beings. And you know, considering that a dog can land 25 bites in four seconds, why would you want to risk that? Why would you want to create a dog who's afraid of people or other dogs and may bite them?